At least one anchor must be carried on all craft, except those close to shore such as kayaks or tenders between a larger vessel and shore. There are a number of different types used in New Zealand. The Danforth is very good in sand and mud and it stows flat. Plough or CQR type anchors are very popular, particularly for larger craft. They work well in most seabeds. Grapnel anchors are really only suitable for rocky bottoms and for short-term anchoring for fishing. There are a number of newer designs that are gaining in popularity, such as the Saka. In general, all vessels should have a length of chain of at least the length of the boat, and the warp needs to be fully five times the maximum expected depth. Using the chart will indicate the depth and help you decide how much warp you'll need to carry. Avoid using floating rope. It can easily foul the propeller. The shackle pin needs to be wired in place. Have a system of hand signals to avoid shouting over the noise of the wind and engine. The seaman-like way to anchor is as follows. Decide where you want to lie in relation to other boats and the wind or tide. Allow yourself room to swing as they change. Motor slowly into the wind or tide just past your chosen spot. Cut the engine and go gently astern, letting the anchor run out under control. When it touches the bottom, pay out three times the depth and take a few turns around a cleat or bollard. Motor back gently against the anchor to help it dig in. Then motor astern firmly to make sure the anchor is set well. Try to put at least the load you expect from the wind or tide. Line up two fixed objects out to one side to help ensure your anchor's not dragging. The anchor rope should be three times the depth in calm conditions and at least five times the depth in heavy conditions. If you mark the rope at regular intervals with paint or coloured twine, it'll help you judge how much you need to let out. Before raising the anchor, warm up the engine and just pull the boat up to the anchor. In strong winds, motor slowly forward, bringing in the rope at the same time. Don't overrun the rope. When the anchor breaks out of the seabed, pull in the chain and anchor and stow them securely before heading away. Vessels must not anchor in any channel so as to impede the navigation of another vessel or anywhere they can put other boats at risk. If you anchor where you swing into a boat that anchored earlier or you drag and hit another boat, you're responsible for the damage. Charts indicate where underwater cables are laid. Fines of up to $100,000 apply in some cable areas, plus the cost of repairs. High voltage power cables are also extremely dangerous. If you think you've snagged a cable, let the anchor and chain go and contact the power or phone company. They may be able to retrieve your anchor for you. Familiarise yourself with any mooring restrictions by checking the chart first when visiting new places. And before you anchor, look out for cables and beacons on shore that mark cables in many places. Damaging cables is a very costly mistake. When coming in to tie up at a wharf or jetty or marina, proceed as follows. Firstly, note the direction of the wind and tide. This will determine how your boat will lie in relationship to the jetty and any other vessels. Then, select a safe position where you wish to moor and advise your crew where it is. Tell them your intended direction of approach, to which side you want the bow and stern mooring lines attached, and which bollard you intend to use on the jetty. Remember, all lines must go under the safety rails. Put out the fenders on the side nearest the jetty. Approach the jetty slowly, allowing for the wind and tide. Your angle of approach and speed through the water will depend on the strength of the wind or tide. Once you have the bow of your vessel in position, put your engine in neutral and turn your wheel to swing the stern back towards the jetty. Then select reverse. As soon as your vessel ends up next to and parallel to the jetty, put your engine into neutral again while your crew makes fast. Tie up your lines both fore and aft. Then attach spring lines to help your boat sit more comfortably alongside. 
you might need to adjust the mooring lines to make it more comfortable. Before you leave your boat, check the likely rise or fall of the tide while you're away and double check what time the tide will change. Practice makes perfect. Always prepare for the unexpected and have plan B in mind. It's wise to practice these maneuvers with your crew in calm conditions so that when the wind or tide does get up, you've developed the skills and teamwork to cope with them. And remember that unlike a car, it's the stern, not the bow, that steers the boat.